Tell us about it. Now, it was looking really bad golf a few years ago. There were golf courses which, you know, you could get a game any day of the week, and that was unheard of before in some of these pristine golf clubs. It, that's all changing again, isn't it? Yeah, we're on the upswing, so I'm excited about that. But I think something you mentioned earlier is very important. There's a lot of young talent in the game that's really regenerating interest in the game. So I think about athletes like Rory McIlroy or Dustin Johnson, world number one, or Jason Day or John Rahm, the young superstar from Spain that's burst onto the scene. Fortunately, all of them happen to be tailor-made athletes, which is a good thing. Yes, they would um, be, wouldn't they? Yeah, but they're, they're so, <laughs> the social awareness of these athletes, their media following, uh, the way they conduct themselves, and the interest that they drive in the game, I think, is very positive. But the underlying macroeconomics of golf are now stable. So we're, we're encouraged about what we've seen. We've seen a couple of years of erosion in participation and rounds played. Those are the two primary metrics that we look Hasn't at. Hasn't it got a bit cheaper as well? Golf, candidly, I think the biggest misnomer in golf is that it's inaccessible because of price. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The average greens fees in the United States are under $40 to play 18 holes, and it's very consistent in global markets around the world. So the access points aren't an issue. Uh, the opportunity really resides in activating the latent demand of golfers that left the game for social reasons. And fortunately, we're seeing them come back to the game for the right reasons, as we discussed earlier. People are time poor. That's, that's the problem, isn't it? And you're asking me in the, in the break, well, why did you play? And I say, well, I don't have the time to play. That's, yeah. the, that's my issue. I'd love to play. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny. When you take a look at the overall segmentation of participation, there are core golfers, there are avid golfers, and then there's recreational golfers. The avid and core golfers, which represent roughly 25% of the total golf population, they are intense. They play as frequently as they did in the past, and their rounds played actually aren't on the way down. The rounds played per year actually are on the way up. So that's good news. It's the recreational play where there may be some time sensitivities in terms of how they allocate their time and their lives. But the good news is we're starting to see alternatives ways to play the game, which are entry points into the bigger game, the more traditional game, which we're excited about. In the United Such as? In the United States, there's a concept called Top Golf, or a partner that we have called Drive Shack, which is uh, driving range facilities with gamification and uh, high engagement capabilities with, with different types of constituencies. We've seen that in Asia for quite some time. I've actually seen it in Korea, uh, see a little bit in Japan. Uh, but there's new access points and socialization in golf that we're very excited about that's bringing a new, 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 pro new professional into the game. Now, where does it go? I mean, you know, where are you concentrating in this part of the world? I mean, China's a huge opportunity. I'm going to come to China in a second, but yeah. there's another country here which used to be just golf crazy, and you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Japan, and yeah. they kind of suffered a w fate worse than the United States, and the lost decade, economically speaking, was in some ways a lost decade when it came to golfing as well. Yeah, well, I think, Rich, we're dealing with the aging population of Japan, so, so part of that is driving uh, some of the challenges that we had faced in participation. But much like the U.S., we've seen stability now for the past two years in Japan. For TaylorMade, our business is extremely strong in Japan. We're seeing uh, consumption rates higher than what we've seen in prior years. Is it years. coming back? That's it the is point. coming back. In fact, the game of golf, I think the misnomer in the game of golf is the way the media has portrayed golf. Um, the game of golf had a subtle uh, decline for a couple years and now has stability in the marketplace. Again, going back to this avid core base relative to the recreational base. Japan is just fine moving forward. Advanced technology from companies like ours is driving that. So when you bring new innovation. Such as? Uh, such as. Uh, the M1 driver, the M2 driver, okay, new TP5, well, TP5X. That means. Well, you have to. When you start playing right. golf, those are the products you want to play. Yeah. We are now able to demonstrate through personalized technology in our golf equipment and golf ball. Uh, technologies that will help you play better. And we've always believed that if we can bring technologies that help golfers play better, they'll enjoy the game more. If they enjoy the game more, their participation will go up. And we're seeing that more now at faster paces than ever before. Right. China then. Now, this is the huge opportunity. It's one which was looking so promising, and then we had this crackdown on conspicuous consumption and corruption, et cetera. And then loads of these golf courses turned out they were illegal. How is that? Factored in. How's that actually played out for you? Well, anything could happen in China. Just asked our team in China how things move relatively quickly there. We still are very optimistic that China has a great future in golf. Uh, even if you saw the young man at the British Open a couple of weeks ago, uh, Li Hao Tung, who finished uh, who finished third, which was fantastic, which created quite a bit of interest. Uh, in golf in China. Um, but what we're seeing in China, yes, there was a, a decline from 700 golf courses to 500 golf courses. What needs to happen in China isn't overly complicated. We need a middle class in China. And if we have a middle class in China, and if we have access points to golf in China at fair market value in China with the right development programs, China golf will explode over time. Exactly. But how is it as a market for you now? 
It's a good market for us. It's not, a great, it's not a great market, market for yeah. us. It's certainly not one of our top five markets in the world as it relates to not only our business but the overall category, and it's simply driven through participation. We need millions of golfers in China to adopt the game and play the game, and that's what we're embarking on. So, for example, Rich, we are invested, TaylorMade's invested in the HSBC Juniors Tour in China, so we're trying to get the youth in the game. Um, but I believe that the current administration needs to get behind the game of golf for all the right reasons. And I think the Olympics had a, a meaningful impact on that last year as well as it continues to globalize the sport. I mean, Tiger Woods engendered so much interest in, in this sport since his... Well, things have gone a bit pear-shaped from, let's just put it that way at the moment. And you, you're, he's one of yours. He is you? one of our guys, yeah. Yep. What, what's happening there? What's happening with Tiger or what's happening with, Tiger with, with and, the game post-Tiger? And, and, yeah. well, Tiger's managing through his own uh, series of challenges right now, and we're highly optimistic through our partnership with him. He's going to emerge from this in a better place, and we're very excited for Tiger in his future and, and look forward to seeing him on the golf course as quickly as he can. But Tiger, I, I don't think anybody can underestimate the impact he had on the game of golf and what's happening to the game of golf in large part because of Tiger, whether it was the media attention that Tiger brought to the game of golf or the entrance of young players that you're now seeing on the PGA and worldwide tours that Tiger influenced, that looked up to Tiger, uh, really are now starting to take the game by storm. And if you look at the, the real entities and personalities on the PGA and worldwide tours right now, below 30, it's absolutely spectacular.